In this section, we will talk about basic activities involved in the development of a software. This is the agenda topics for today's lecture. So, software development is an engineering activity. Software development has a great deal in common with the discipline of engineering with, uh, from which the term software engineering arises and is said to be the application of a systematic, disciplined, quantifiable approach to the development, operation and maintenance of software. That is the application of engineering to software. So carrying out a systematic, disciplined and a quantifiable approach implies management and assumes that project management is a necessary activity within the discipline of software development. So as we discuss in section 2, the words such as reliable, flexible and maintainable, they describe characteristics of software system. They are all aspects of software quality. To obtain a high quality software product requires a well managed development process. But the term engineering for software development is also associated with few other factors that developers are concerned with meeting a set of requirements. There is usually an identifiable problem that can solve. There is a defined process that can be used to produce a solution and within that process, there are a number of identifiable phases or activities. There are tasks to be done in each phase that result in one or possibly more than one artifact related to the final product, software, hardware or document. The developers undertake different roles to perform such tasks. They are designer, programmer, tester and so on. The quality of both the products and the processes by which they are made is important. The right product is being built, that is called validation and the product is built in the right way, that is called verification and the product is behaving as expected, that is called testing. The, there are tools to improve the effectiveness and efficiency of the tasks performed by developers in their various roles. There is a body of knowledge that developers might use and or add to. There are always ways of working to support the previous five factors such as standards and rules for decomposition in a given context. There is a recognized professional activity with its own code of practice and legal framework. So these were some factors that are relating engineers or engineering with the software development. We have the development process that is basically set of rules that defines how a software development project should be carried out and a set of software engineering activities associated with the development of software. Each activity undertakes some clearly defined process, starting with a number of inputs from any preceding activities. On completion of an activity, there may be one or more outputs, which are known as deliverables. The order in which these activities are carried out is called a life cycle or process model, and it outlines an overall process for the development of a software system. Project management and quality management activities, they are the part of the life cycle of the software development. A complete life cycle takes us from the first ideas about the need for a software system to its final deliverable. In general, we can identify a customer as someone who pays for a software system in contrast to the people who use it on a day-to-day -day basis. The users Although a customer may also be one of the intended users, a successful development project will deliver a product that meets or even exceeds the customer's expectations. So software can be developed without an identified customer. We have typical technical activities for the development of software. There are many and varied methods used to develop software. However, each one typically includes these activities roughly as for in given in the diagram. Domain modeling 
that is understanding the environment in which a system may be introduced the business processes and rules this is typically an activity that precedes a decision to develop a software system requirement that also known as requirement engineering a step of set of steps including requirement solicitation where you identify the problem and requirement analysis where you categorize prioritize and model requirements this defines what the system is to do design determining how you will solve the problem implementation that is an acting upon the decisions made at the design stage this is coding all about coding testing that you will test what you have done so that you can determine whether or not you have solved the problem so different methods may subdivide the above activities or use different terminology a specific approach the unified process will be introduced in later section then where we will illustrate the main case study however these activities are not enough to develop a good software system other activities are needed to a greater or lesser extent depending on the context so you are likely to break up most problems into smaller more manageable chunks and deal with each one separately it will then be necessary to bring the chunks together into a unified whole this process is known as integration and is sometimes identified as a separate activity sometimes delivery of the software system is also identified separately especially when there are contractual implications such as payment so a software system is likely to change during its operational lifetime this is the maintenance activity which allows a software system to evolve in order to correct errors adapt to changing environment introduce enhancements required by the customer improve the software in anticipation of future changes the four activities of analysis design implementation and testing are the ones you will see most often in diagrams depicting the process model of software development so it is important to recognize that they are not the only activities involved in the process of developing a good software system project management and quality management they are the two additional activities that hold the process of development together so maintenance will inevitably involve the activities of requirements design implementation and testing and will itself need to be managed so a process model or a life cycle it is a description of all the events and activities in the life of a software system or product and the sequence in which they happen so you can choose how to connect the activities together to form a process model which you can then use to elaborate a process for developing your software for example if you arrange the five activities of requirements design testing and maintenance into a single sequence you have the classic waterfall model however in practice it is not usually possible to complete each activity correctly in one attempt in addition as development proceeds the products of the earlier stages become dated outdated as your understanding of both the software and its environment evolves So if project use a strictly sequential process model a working version of the software system will not be available until late in the testing activity this will represent a long wait for both customer and users so who won't be able to see the working response to their requirements until the final product is finished so any errors detected in the working version of the software could be disastrous as it would be too late to correct them So real projects really follow a purely sequential process model. The act of reviewing is an important activity when testing the quality of any development process and its resulting products. An alternative process model is to iterate around one or more of the activities. So iteration allows the developers to improve the outputs from a given set of activities, get feedback before moving on to the next activity. So in addition Uh, 
iteration allows a group of people, usually developers, to perform a review of a sequence of activities or of an activity and its outputs. So in general, reviewing a proposed solution provides the feedback that is necessary to modify it and improve the solution. So this approach is known as iterative and incremental development. So each iteration is a complete small project with a short fixed time frame that is all time boxed, maybe three weeks for example. It consists of requirements, design, implementation, testing and integration and resulting in a partially working system. So each of these repeated short iterations adds complexity until the final system is produced. The system grows incrementally. Okay, so next process model we will talk about is agile development. Agile development has become in the last 20 years a popular approach to software development. It is an umbrella term used to describe a variety of agile methods that promote a set of practices that encourage simpler, more lightweight, faster software development that can adapt to the inevitable changes in customer requirements. The continual realignment of development goals with the needs and expectations of the customer aims at software that better serves its purpose. Extreme programming is one of the best known agile methods. It is a lightweight method based on intensive testing and incremental development. It defines a series of practices about how individuals and teams should work, how the environment should be set up, and how the work should be carried out. These practices include incremental design, test-first programming, programming in pairs, continuous integration, planning for the week, and so on. Another popular agile development approach is Sacrum. Sacrum, which is also uh, defines a set of roles, events, artifacts, and rules. All events are time boxed and have well defined rules. They in, uh, comprise of the sprint, a development phase no longer than a month that has as a deliverable or usable working increment. It, it includes the sprint planning meeting that lasts no more than eight hours. It includes the daily sacrum, a daily meeting no longer than 15 minutes, looking at what has been done and planning the work for the next 24 hours. So many of the agile practices are geared to better communication and collaboration among developers. So how to choose an appropriate process? So by definition, a good software system must be fit for its intended purpose. It should therefore be evident that become, because software is needed for such a variety of purposes, there is no single development process that will suit all purposes. So you can consider some reasons for building systems and you can compare it with the software system. Like for the software system, it should be useful, usable, reliable, flexible, available and affordable. So it should be no surprise that there are different development processes for different types of systems. Indeed, software companies often specialize in developing software for specific kinds of businesses such as banking or manufacturing. Also, go for choosing the appropriate level of formality. So how the amount of formality in a development process vary? There are some government legislations. They often require software systems to be built to support new administrative functions. Here, the developers will conform to government approved standards. The software systems should have these standards or design methodologies. On the other hand, if we talk about some certain financial areas, here the software system's purpose is the time to market. It is critical because if you miss out, your com competitor will uh, take the turn. When there is a need for a software system to support such a service, Development is almost a race against time. So every aspect of the development process has to be tuned to meet the time to market. So there is no single development process that is appropriate for all kinds of software product. So the need for a formal development process is different for the need for other type of projects. 
also configuration management is the discipline of managing and controlling change in the evolution of software so this activity is also related to the need for integration if we talk about the size of a project so the size of a project influences the choice of the development process as well the amount of formality in the process can be minimal small teams of up to 10 people can communicate and respond to changes informally but in larger projects a well defined procedure for control development is necessary and informal communication network on its own is not enough in this situation so just as modularization is the way to deal with the complexity of a software system developers can be assigned different activities and deliverables within a given project this partitioning allows developers to specialize and become analysts such as designers programmers and so on when we talk about agile development so it encourages collaborative development to reduce the problems of communication that can arise in large projects so xp promotes peer programming where the code is written by peers of programmers to encourage communication feedback encouragement and in scrum the daily scrum meeting promotes teams awareness with every member of the team knowing what others are doing so developers may opt for an agile approach with peer programming as in xp and they can quickly deliver an initial version that is then updated on short iteration cycles so a software solution to a problem needs to be considered in the broad context of the domain to allow you to manage the risks associated with the development project so how to deal with risk for example if delays cause the team to miss the market window it does not matter how much software has been developed because it is no longer of benefit to the customer and users so assessment of the risks and taking steps to reduce them are important activities in software development this is known as risk management so in a typical project the major risks are around the requirements do you understand them have you got them all are you changing too frequently anything that you can do to increase your confidence that the requirements you have are both necessary and sufficient can reduce the risk of project failure so an agile approach takes the view that requirements will change during development and therefore they should be under continuous review by involving customers throughout development it is easier to address changes in requirements and reduce the risk of making the wrong decisions here you have uh, the illustration of the spiral process in front of you this process deals with risk explicitly and can be used in the development of a software system there are four steps with four quadrants with each iteration of the spiral determine the objectives the alternatives and the constraints evaluate the objectives identify and resolve the associated risks develop and verify a partial solution or product review that solution and plan the activities for the next iteration so the spiral process starts when it is recognized that a particular organizational process can be improved or supported with the aid of a software system the distance from the origin is intended to show how many resources have been used the cumulative cost of a project there is no need for a complete solution to be produced by the end of the first iteration of the spiral so this is the first iteration this is the second iteration and this is the last iteration so first iteration could focus on the question can we build an acceptable software system with the resources that can be brought to bear <coughs> agile development follows loosely speaking a spiral approach and has mitigation of risks as an important concern so such a risk driven model is also helpful 
when developing large software systems or systems where the developers have little experience of the problem domain. Let's talk about traceability. The need for a software system often comes from a set of potential users who may not employed in the same company as the developers of the software system. So initially developers must find out about the user's domain and express their understanding of the problem in a form that is appropriate for the proposed development process. In a plan driven process, uh, early in the process developers produce a requirement specification document that identifies what the proposed software system should do and the environment in which it must work. It relates what the users want to, what the developers aim to provide. This implies that there is a need to record more than just the requirements. It allows for the tracing of the history of each requirement from its origin in the problem domain through the various intermediate activities so that it is possible to reconstruct the significant events that led to the final operating software system. So the ability to trace the history of each requirement is known as traceability. Among other things, traceability is essential for dispute resolution. So knowing what was agreed during a project, for seeing the effect later in the project of changing or deleting requirements, for demonstrating that you have dealt with each requirement. If we will talk about agile project, so agile project has documentation in the form of user stories and tests. So a user story describes some functionality required by a user while a test is an executable form of a user story and therefore directly related to it. Tests are written before coding and are also directly related to the code produced. Changes over time can therefore be tracked through the help of a tool that manages source code and traceability can be preserved. Keeping a project notebook is a disciplined approach to organize your thoughts and actions as a software developer. So your project notebook is a record of notes, thoughts, drawings, ideas and decisions as you work on a project. So in its simplest form, a project notebook will be paper based but it could be recorded in files or on personal computers. So you must keep accurate dates and times for the information that you record in your notebook for the following three reasons. All of them relate to the traceability. Your project notebook may be required as evidence in some inquiry or even in the court of law. It helps you to review what you have done and how long you took to do some task. It facilitates learning. So this is all about part two uh, and in the next section we will discuss something more about software development. Thank you very much.